Hi friends, it's me, Dr. Muhammad Kazafi, and you are watching Dr. Muhammad Kazafi Views. As you know, this is the continuation of our uh, serial vlog regarding the neurosurgery. Um, uh, good morning, where there is a morning. Good evening, where there is a good e evening. Uh, today's my topic is a penetrating head injury, and I am taking one case for analogy for to justify f for that, uh, this topic. I have a 35-year-old previously healthy man presented to the trauma pre presented to the trauma bay after suffering a gunshot wound to the head. Paramedic estimated that one liter of the blood was lost at the scene and the patient was a GCS 3 over 15 after arrival. However, after initial resuscitation, he began withdrawing with his right leg and localizing to pain with his right arm. On the examination, patient wants but does not follow command or have comprehension of his speech any kind of. His left pupil is 6 mm fixed and his right pupil is 4 mm and briskly reactive to 2 mm. Other retained differential diagnosis is you can say the other retained foreign body or penetrating injury definitely here. I did the CT scan for him, CT scan with the left frontal extra axial hyperdensity consists with epidural hematoma. Further workup I did for him and found there is a uh, and found there is a some penetrating injury in the skull. Advanced trauma life support protocol to assist for the other injury, basic pre-operative labs done for him and uh, coagulation panel has been done. Actually, the pathophysiology with this patient, the gunshot wound initially produced the temporary cavitation of the tissue as the bullet passes through the brain and that result in the pressure wave that injure both adjacent and distant tissues. After the initial cavitation, tissue quickly collapse into the cavity and the hemorrhage into the cavity occur and resulting in a space occupying hematoma along the track. Higher velocity projectile have a higher kinetic energy therefore usually cause more damage. Open penetrating wound also cause contamination of intracranial cavity. So here the some guidelines I want to present in front of you specifically this is the surgical recommendation for penetrating brain injury. Avoid use of entry exit wound even planning scalp incision. Identify global hemispheric injuries and role of large decompressive craniotomy, craniectomy craniotomy or craniectomy, separate cranial facial orbital compartment with autologous bone or titanium mesh for support and water light repair with dural substitutes. Initiate early repair and fixation of the orbital bandu to support future cranial vault reconstruction and perform conservative debridement of the trajectory path and embedded fragment. Consider intraoperative cerebral angiography in patient with the combined penetrating neck and brain injury. One thing is very important in my opinion, it is the initial early repair and fixation of the orbital bandu to support future cranial vault reconstruction. It is very, very important thing. 
because separating cranial facial orbital compartment with autologous bone or titanium mesh for the support and the watertight repair with the dural substitute it is also an important thing at the recommendation criteria for the intracranial fragment removal few criteria cannot be denied and they still are very important for us fragment movement we have to check when you are removing you check maybe fragment has been removed repeat scan if needed <coughs> sorry abscess formation vascular compression ventricular obstruction such as hydrocephalus heavy metal identified in cerebrospinal fluid so these are criteria very i just want to talk you little detail like that the fragment movement is very important you have to repeat the ct scan if if needed abscess formation it can cause abscess formation you have to remove vascular compression it may compress some vessel ventricular obstruction yes it may cause any kind of uh, hydrocephalus obstructive or non obstructive heavy metal identify in cerebrospinal fluid so these are very important things few criteria for intracranial angiography following penetrating brain injury it is important also penetrating injury through terion 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 orbit posterior fossa so this is if you are thinking the terional penetrating injury orbital penetrating injury posterior uh, fossa penetrating to angiography penetrating fragment with the intracranial hematoma do angiography known cerebral artery sacrifice or pseudo aneurysm at the time of the initial exploration do the angiography blunt sorry blast induced penetrating injury with glasgow coma scale score less than 8 do the angiography transcranial doppler or computerized tomographic angiography evidence of severe vasospasm do the angiography so the treatment options here for my patient upon arrival initial evaluation and management definitely initiated per atls protocol and the patient was intubated for airway protection and bolused with iv fluid to avoid hypotension plus pulse oximetry was used to monitor and prevent hypoxia the patient was bolused with 3% hypertonic saline and started on continuous infusion and the patient was hyperventilated to target at the carbon dioxide estimated temperature pressure of the carbon dioxide of 25 mm hg corresponding with the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide in uh, uh, 30 mm hg surgical management after initial resuscitation the patient was brought to the operating room for an emergent right sided decompressive hemicraniectomy and an arterial line and central venous line already placed before the surgery the patient was positioned supine with a wedge under his right side so that the right side of his head could be oriented up during the maintenance of the spinal precaution a standard trauma flap was turned a during up during maintenance of the spinal precaution a standard trauma flap was turned a pre a pericranial flap was preserved in anticipation of repairing the frontal sinus the craniotomy was then performed at this time and it was evident that the entry wound violated and left frontal sinus the frontal sinus was cranialized was cranialized and 
the sinus mucosa was marsupialized or or meticulously debreded with with the curator and the pituitary ronger forcep a small piece of temporalis muscle was used to pack the deep portion of the sinus the operative field was then debrided bone and the bullet fragment were carefully removed from the brain surface and the bullet track after debridement care there was taken to ensure meticulous hemostasis the previously prepared periosteal flap was then be used to cover the cranialized frontal sinus and tucked under the right frontal lobe a large craniotomy was accomplished and the wound was closed in a standard fashion at the end of the operation a contralateral intracranial pressure monitor was placed as you know the there is a some definitely we have a an a treatment plan definitely you know that for example if the patient is injured so definitely micro environmental alteration happens glial activation happen neuronal death happen sometime spontaneous uh, plasticity help us cell replacement happen directed plasty ha- happen and and the circuit reconstruction then happen and then the outcome so this is the actually this is a traditional strategy for treating traumatic brain injury focus on reducing sequelae of primary brain insult to salvage acutely threatened tissue whereas the restorative strategy in, introduced or in or intervention that support a spontaneous and direct repair of the neural circuit to improved functional recovery so this is the actually a uh, some kind of a over review over that as you know definitely in a, when we are on opening the dura so close the, actually the native dural flap sometime is good original dural incision and 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 sometime we have to put the dural patch for closure so it is not a bad, bad idea if you are putting an a, 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 a dural patch because a uh, closure is a important thing and uh, it is it is helping and uh, to uh, uh, to maintain the anatomy of the brain somehow superficial temporal and uh, auricular temporal nerve sometime sacrifice during that kind of craniotomy and you know the um, uh, the alternative for the closure of the basal skull such as you can fill with the muscle bone dust fibrin cement titanium mesh or split skull strouts you can put there so it is an option uh, so you can fill that uh, we can say the the uh, 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 the basal skull defects because you have to cover the basal skull defect you know the and a preserved and a, we have tried to preserve and a, when these kind of surgery happen sometime we cannot preserve an olfactory tract so we have to and a, put effort to preserve the contralateral olf- olfactory tract when we are doing such kind of craniectomy or craniotomy so uh, this is the uh, uh, some idea i give i will i want to talk about more about the penetrating injury but as you know the complication and avoidance and management is very very important here like that uh, like that the abc airway breathing circulation come first be sure that the patient's airway is secure and patient is hemodynamically stable it is critical to avoid hypotension and hypoxia mannitol should be avoided in favor of 3% hypertonic saline or used with caution as diuresis can result 
during hypotension in an under reconstruction patient or under resuscitated patient the cognate of potential spinal injury and maintain strict spinal precaution it is important to note any clinical or radiological evidence of the air sinus being violated it is the particular in this particular case what i am treating i was treating uh, this case uh, so uh, no, we should anticipate the need for the frontal sinus repair by by preparing a uh you can say the pedicularized periosteal uh, flap or the primary dural closure is preferred and can be achieved with the periosteal or temporalis fascia or fascia lata gra graft or if you have any other alternative available and you like to close with that i think it is good for the patient A study imaging preoperatively to anticipate any potential venous sinus injury displacement of the bone fragment that are tamponizing and uh, injured venous sinus can result in voluminous uh, intraoperative bleeding be sure to have blood product readily available transventricular and by hemispheric injury is pretend to pretend a uh, protend a a worse outcome and intracranial pressure monitoring and management is critical for the post operative care so the seizure prophylaxis broad spectrum antibiotic prophylaxis and administration of tight uh, of tetanus uh, vaccinations are recommended for any patient with penetrating head injury it is also important to look for other gunshot wounds during your initial physical examination here i want to mention actually the penetrating head injury refers to any injury that breach the skull and and protective barrier of brain an incident such as the gunshot wound stab stabbing fall or accident involve sharp object can cause the type of trauma patient with the penetrating head injury require both medical and surgical management the activity for healthcare professional is designed to 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 uh, to to, to, uh, to uh, uh, present his skills in evaluating patient with the penetrating Uh, head injury and learner will gain valuable insight into the penetrating uh, head injury management complications prevention and rehabilitation so this activity what i am doing it is let little bit for this the brain is the nervous system central organ and responsible for coordinating and controlling various body function briefly the brain's main region include the cerebral cortex thalamus hypothalamus limbic system midbrain cerebellum medulla oblongata pons the cranial nerve emanate at different brain level and this ventricles or the ventricles are the space inside the brain filled with the cerebrospinal fluid anterior and posterior anterior arterial network of the central nervous system form the circle of villus and the venous sinus drains the superficial vein which follow the same course as their corresponding arteries deep brain structure also drain to the venous sinus via deep veins and the cranium or the skull serves as a brain protective enclosure the frontal parietal temporal occipital sphenoid and the ethmoid bones comprise comprise the cranium the skull bone thickness varies in different region which some area being more valuable to penetrating injury than others the meaning are the 
Brain protective coverage divided into dura, arachnoid, and pia matter. The dura matter is the outermost layer lying just beneath the skull. The arachnoid matter is the middle layer separating from the dura by the subdural space. The arachnoid granulation are a small outward production of the arachnoid matter that allows CSF to re-enter the bloodstream. The subarachnoid space contains CSF and the PM matter is the innermost layer adhering close to the brain. Penetrating head injury continue or constitute, sorry, penetrating head injury constitute a foreign body head injury breaching the skull invariably involving the dura matter and the brain. Penetrating head injury is the most lethal form of traumatic head injury. Almost 80% of the victim die before reaching the hospital and 50% of these reaching the hospital even eventually expires in the emergency department during resuscitation and recovery and rehabilitation strategy among survivors are often protected and complicated. Protracted and complicated. In 2001, severe head injury managed guidelines published by the Brain Trauma Foundation and the American Association of Neurological Surgeons and do not include uh, the penetrating head injury management algorithm. So the current guidelines for managing penetrating head injury are based on the military protocol during the Iraq and Afghanistan conflict over two decades ago. However, a widely expected evaluation protocol includes the primary survey stabilization, secondary survey with detailed neurological examination and pretend imaging studies, the cornerstone of the neurosurgical management of the penetrating head injury or head trauma involve early decompression, safe debridement, and watertight dural closures. Penetrating head injury can result from high velocity penetration, for example, from measles and blast fragments. Penetrating head injury may also arise from low velocity injuries as happen after knife stabbing incident. The force magnitude and damage extent and the direction determine the presentation of the condition. Approximately 20,000 headshot injuries annually occur only in USA. And if we consider the pathophysiology the projectile, a foreign object, penetrate the skull forcefully and damaging the meninges and the brain and the com complexity of the brain injury is determined by the projectile, blastic characteristic, bullet design, muscle velocity, travel distance and yaw or trembling. The projectile creates a permanent cavitation along its path and the sonic and the pressure waves from the projectile motion produce temporary cavitation. Expansion and the retraction of these cavities results in distant punctate hemorrhage and hematoma progression which may cause herniation syndrome. Released tissue thromboplastin from the injured brain parenchyma can lead to coagulopathy. The mechanism of which blast injury arises are the following. Primary blast injury due to the overpressure wave move through the body or the secondary blast injury second due to the blast fragment penetrating the tissue. The mechanism of the blast injury definitely is very very important. As I mentioned, the primary blast injury due to the overpressure wave moving through the body. 
and secondary blast injury due to the blast fragment penetrating the tissue and the tertiary blast injury due to blast wind propelling the victims and the quaternary blast injury due to explosive force causing burns and crush injury so definitely we have to understand what is the blast injury and which is causing the penetrating head injury so if we could understand this definitely we can manage these kind of patients very very well and appropriately the pattern of the blast injury include the following involvement of the organ under the body armor soft tissue cranio orbital injuries neurovascular injuries so these three kinds of the blast injury usually you will found in the blast injured patient which is the involvement of the organ under the body armor or a soft tissue cranio cranio orbital injuries and the neurovascular injury so here the neurosurgeon's role are very very high penetrating injuries may introduce contamination or foreign material into the brain and increasing infection risk and secondary injury mechanism include ischemia oxidative stress extra uh, excito uh, toxicity metabolic derangements can occur in an hour to days following the initial trauma so these processes can exhibit tissue damage and neurological deficits history and the physicals as in any other medical injury evaluating patient with the penetrating head injury or head trauma begin with the primary survey assess the patient airway breathing circulation disability and exposure a b c d e and the resuscitation must be started immediately for unconscious patient with no respiration or pulse regardless of cause once stable patient once stable the secondary survey must be completed history must be obtained as much as possible from the patient however individual with the penetrating head trauma often present with the altered sensorium and making it necessary for clinician to elicit information from the emergency medical service team witness or other rescuer so the history should include the following details date and time of injury weapons type and caliber location of the injury event or event surrounding the injury the occurrence of the neurological symptom like loss of consciousness and seizure and their quality and duration any medical morbidity whether the patient is currently on any anticoagulant or antiplatelet agent evaluating for the signs suggested raised intracranial pressure is critical initial manifestation of penetrating head injury such as headache nausea vomiting and papilla edema may be non specific during physical examination the superficial wound should be inspected the entrance wound and if patient if present the exit wound must be identified blood matted hair may cover these wound and when a patient present with the gunshot wound of the head other body parts including the neck chest and the abdomen should be seen properly and should be uh, an uh, scrutinized for other gunshot wounds if you uh, have a chance and damage uh, to the heart or great vessel may even be the more life threatening a subgaleal hematoma can become extensive because the blood quickly di- uh, dissect through the loose areolar tissue and this kind of hematoma 
can cause, can cause hemodynamic compromise and assist whether there is any oozing of the cerebrospinal fluid, blood or brain parenchyma from the injured side. So evaluate for the hemotympanum which may be indicate a basilar skull fracture and examine all orifices for, for the retention of the foreign body, uh, the weapon, the teeth, the bone fragment, anything. A detailed neurological assessment should be performed starting with the Glasgow Coma score and the motor sensory and the cranial nerve function and the deep tendon reflexes may be examined in patients with altered sensorium. The mental status examination and the coordination testing may be added in cooperative patient. Assume multiple injuries in case of the primary uh, uh, primary uh, sorry penetrating head trauma and the neck, chest, abdomen, pelvis and the extremities must also be carefully examined because the penetrating head injury presentation depend upon the trauma mechanism, lesion site, associated injuries, lateralizing sign can help clinician localizing the brain injury and determining its ex extent at baseline. Note that the neurological damage may be distant from the impact site. The, the evaluation definitely a very very important thing for the penetrating head injury. Definitely you know you know there is a penetrating head injury but the details you must know by evaluation. For the evaluation, the initial laboratory exam for the patient who suffered traumatic injury must include the complete blood count, blood typing, coagulation studies and the basic metabolic panel if an emergency surgery is likely. Information from these blood tests will guide the surgical team in evaluating the patient health before performing the procedure abnormalities must be addressed before or during surgery. Imaging studies must be include plain radiograph, computerized tomography or magnetic resonance imaging. The role of these tests are explained below. Plain radiograph aid in determining the shape of the penetrating object and presence of the intracranial missile or bone fragment and concurrent pneumocephalus. However, the missile trajectory may not be easily determined owing the to an, uh, re <coughs> so, and, uh, only by the fourth fragment. And the plain x-ray are also appropriate for documenting injury in other body parts in polytrauma case. CT is the neuroradiologically uh, radiological uh, or we can say the neuroradiological modality of choice and uh, missile penetrating head injury definitely you can see why CT scan may show in in driven bone and the missile fragment and providing the the essential clue of the mesial trajectory and the intracranial injury pattern and the associated herni herniation effect. However, the CT scan may miss radiolucent object like the wood fragment only you can find by naked eye. Certain, fra certain factors are essential in critical decision making and have a prognostic implication these may include the following such as the site of injury and the exit wound, presence of intracranial fragments, missile tract and its relationship to both the blood vessels and air containing skull base structures and presence of intracranial air, pattern of the intracranial injury, presence of cerebral herniation. So both acute and chronic lesions may appear in the CT scan as in patient who had a stroke before the penetrating injury differentiates acute from the chronic lesion and helping determine there is a baseline neurological function in individual with prior brain injury. MRI definitely 
may help to localize wooden object if present and the modal and this modality also provides valuable information on associated soft tissue injury however an mri should not be performed if intracranial metallic fragment could be present so this is the limitation of mri the for the treatment and management patient must be stabilized without removing the penetrating uh, uh, object in the pre hospital setting or or a non trauma facility early evaluation of high risk mechanism at a level 1 trauma center may improve outcome and the patient with the penetrating head injury require meticulous sorry meticulous medical and surgical management in the emergency department resuscitation and the stabilization should be provided and managing the a b c d e using the advanced trauma life support guidelines and the early activation of a trauma team may help promptly recognize polytrauma the systolic blood pressure must be maintained with above 90 mm hg a prime dictum in the new military model of management of the of the penetrating head injury includes the following saving the patient's life by performing atls advanced cardiac life support and the four forward approach in resuscitation and decompression preventing infection by ensuring a watertight dural closure preserving function by aggressively sorting and mitigating secondary insult such as meningitis seizures and strokes restoring an autonomic function by cranioplasty and the details of strategy in each stage of care are provided below pre hospital care a goal of this stage are initial resuscitation secondary injury prevention or mitigation on scene wound management cervical spine immobilization avoiding intracranial hypertension icp more than 20 mmhg brain tissue hypoxia or hyperemia more than 35 mmhg is a critical to minimize neuronal damage and the combat ex- experience have shown the significance of early hypotension hypoxia hypocarbia and hypercarbia management it is very very important if you could manage this rapid transport to the definitive care unit is crucial in the pre hospital setting and the far forward approach incorporate rapid evacuation from the kill box is to the safer area critical care air transport uh, or uh, tra- tra- air transport transfer the patient to combat uh, uh, support uh, hospital while responder provide prompt medical evaluation and resuscitation a priority of the emergency department care goals are aggressive resuscitation stabilization clinical assessment and the radiological workup many patient with the penetrating head injury will likely require operative intervention clinician must have a low threshold for obtaining surgical consultations penetrating objects must not be removed from the skull un- skull until the trauma and the neurosurgical evaluation are obtained instead the protruding object should be stabilized and protected from the motion during the patient transportation to prevent further injury A sterile dressing must be applied to both the entrance and exit wounds surgical management is very very important effective hemostasis and infection control strategies were not available until 1889 acute decompression and uh, uh, and hemorrhage control were the initial goal of surgical intervention initially 
radical debridement strategy removing all foreign body evolved from the uh, from the uh, from the principle uh, of dr harvey's pushing and he was utilized earlier during world war 1 and 2 and the korean vietnam and iraq iran war <laughs> and uh, he learned lot of thing and he applied there the concept was to limit secondary injury and promote eventual reconstruction during the world war 2 dr donald matson outlined the tents of far forwarding neurosurgery immediate life saving decompression neuronal function preservation and atomic de- restoration infection prevention and these thing is still are valuable rapid evacuation of the casualty blood availability in the forward areas and the antibiotic use have the dramatic improvement for penetrating head injury or head trauma uh, outcomes since then a shift of the conservative debridement started during the 1980 when the israeli lebanon conflict happened and the early radical decompression by hemi Tranectomy with conservative debridement and the duroplasty was advocated, starting the time of the operation in the some wars. However, a new penetrating head head trauma management strategy was recently evolved, whereby rapid, far forwarding cranial decompression with water water tight. Dural closure is preferred before rapid evacuation to the major trauma center. Surgical treatment should ideally be performed within 12 hours of the injury to pre- to prevent infection and other complication, non-viable of scal- scalp and the bone fragment. A necrosed brain tissue are extensively debrided and the hematoma causing mass effect. are promptly evacuated and only the superficial bone and the mesial fragment and the easily accessed non allocant brain region are removed for the so the indication for removing intraventricular foreign body are are migration of, of and and the occlusive hydrocephalus or the porous or the porous material rock or the wood contact with the ventricle and the infection so these indications came now a day is very very important what a tight dural closure is the dictum however deeply embedded fragments are not pursued unless the delayed movement or vascular compromise has been documented or noted so this strategy minimizes damage from mesial tract exploration and hemostasis around the venous sinus can be achieved using techniques such as the muscle and the dural evaluation sinus ligation and over sewing which uh, preserve the the sinus whenever possible additional hemostatic agents such as surgery cell gel form and cotonoid patties may be used and it cause uh, and it makes some kind of a revolution in that kind of the surgeries so the sinus must be exposed secured and repaired while avoiding inadvertent air emboli bilateral exposure such as the coronal incision providing adequate exposure and vascular control such techniques also facilitate wound exposure by partial thickness scalp releasing incision and the proximal control of the cervical carotid is critical while exploring the lateral scalp base temporary or permanent csf diversion helps to decompress the hemicraniotomy flap and seal the associated csf leaks scalp flap vascularity must be preserved knockout removal may making malt strike parallel to the weapon track is recommended a modern military paradigm paradigm focuses on early cranial decompression csf leak prevention and aggressive secondary insult mitigation so 
it is nowadays helping the, in the BTF, military and civilian traumatic brain injury experts. Multidisciplinary post-operative management is very, very important. In this case, the patient must be transferred to the neurointensive care unit and closely monitored by interprofessional team members and the intracranial pressure must be maintained between the 20 to 25 millimeter of mercury and cerebral perfusion pressure above 60 uh, mmHg and the nutritional and medical management must focus on the deep vein thrombosis seizures and the stroke prevention. In the multi in the penetrating head injury, we can miss maybe patient has a Alzheimer disease or he has a stroke, previous stroke, or he has cancer mats of the brain or cerebral aneurysm or frontal lobe syndrome, epilepsy, or hydrocephalus, or prion-related disease, which should be checked if you could. Here, however, the physical examination and the imaging test will differentiate penetrating head injury from these conditions. Meanwhile, penetrating head injury has a highly variable presentation due to the differences in the intracranial projectile movement and which includes the following such as penetrating injury where in the projectile penetrating the skull and dura but remain within the skull characteristically lacking an exit row. So if penetrating injury with through and through mechanism characterized by having both entry and exit wound. In other tangential injuries where the measle or fragment glance of the skull but may drive skull fragment inside the brain. Same way the record chat at uh, creates a multiple intracranial trajectories. Carrying when the projectile penetrating the skull but moving along the cortical periphery without penetrating the brain parenchyma, this is also an option or there is also a difference. So the detailed evaluation will help differentiate between these patterns. The clinical outcome or the prognosis of the penetrating head trauma are mostly not easily to explain. Low post resuscitation, GCS, old age, hypoxia, hypotension, and the use of the, the blastic weapon conferred is a, all are the bad prognosis. Lateral perforating wound have the worst prognosis, and the penetrating wound involving the zona fatalis, such as the supracellar area comprises the third ventricle, hypothalamus, thalamus, and showing a tram track sign or imaging have almost 100% mortality. mortality. Self-inflicted fatal penetrating head injury is observed in 35% of cohort and additionally uh, Systemic review and meta-analysis with the pooled sample size of roughly 2,000 patients revealed that the 35% of cohort with penetrating hand injury had a poor outcome and the overall mortality for these patients was 18% and the GCS scores greater than 8 at presentation is a significant predictor of decreasing mortality but morbidity we cannot comment at this moment. However, far forward strategies in the military setting are associated with fourfold increase in patient leaving independently at two air compared to their civilian counterparts with penetrating head injury. Complications, as you know, the complication after surviving penetrating head trauma can be categorized as follows. Hypoxia, hypotension, hematoma, 
ischemia, raised intracranial pressure and atomic defect, neurogenic pulmonary edema, stunned myocardium syndrome, dyselectrolytemia from the diabetes insipidus, cerebral salt wasting syndrome, syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone, neuroendocrine dysfunction, traumatic optic neuropathy, cranial nerve injuries. So these are the early complications which I mentioned just before. Some intermediate complications such as refractory cerebral edema, acute hydrocephalus, seizures, vasospasm, CSF leaks, pseudoaneurysm, traumatic intracranial aneurysm, deep venous thrombosis are the intermediate complications. Some complications are the late complications such as infection, late hydrocephalus, CSF fistula, venous sinus occlusion, arteriovenous fistula, shrunken skin flap syndrome, temporalis atrophy, hygroma, scalp necrosis, complication relating to cranioplasty, lead or copper toxicity often retain blood fragment, Grossly contaminated wound, CSF leak, perforating wound, penetrating wound with air sinus violation, transventricular injury pattern or those crossing the midline have an increased infection risk. The incidence of infection was 60% in the pre-antibiotic era. Presently, the incision, sorry, the incidence of the Infection in patient with the penetrating head trauma is only 4 to 10 percent in the military compared to 1 to 5 percent among slave civilians. Infection risk is also high for patients with lower GSCS score and higher organ failure assessment. Cerebral uh, cephalosporine administration at least 7 to 14 days is usually recommended for the antibiotic prophylaxis. Staphylococcus epidermidis, Staphylococcus aureus, gram-negative bacilli and ropes are the most common cause of secondary infection in patients with the penetrating head injury. Metronidazole can be added to cephalosporine to, bird, to, to broaden the antibacterial coverage and synthetic graft should be avoided in the contaminated wound so the CSF leak occurring remotely from the point of entry and exit wound may require CSF diversion. Ventrivascular complications in penetrating head trauma range from 5 to 14 percent orbitofacial, terional region involvement, extensive dural penetration, intracranial hematoma, and the occurrence of the subarachnoid hemorrhage are associated with higher vascular complication risk in patients with the penetrating head trauma. Blast exposure also alleviates the risk of neurovascular injury and vasospasm. The incidence of post-traumatic epilepsy range from 30 to 50 percent with 10% occurring in first week and 80% occurring within the first two years of injury. The prophylactic anti-epileptic use beyond the first seven days of injury is not recommended. The most common complication associated with non-missile penetrating head trauma include vascular damage is 19% and infection is 14%. So, the step injury with the transorbital penetration hematoma larger than the tract and the depth exceeding 40 mm have a high risk of the developing vascular injury. Step to the, uh, to the referral time greater than 24 hours, the lack of prophylactic antibiotic and the presence of a weapon in situ increase the risk of infection and the only study revealed that the Overall mortality about the 10% with vascular injury accounting for 42% of them. Low GCS on admission, concurrent vascular injury, allocant brain involvement and poor outcome are also other, fact, other things. As you know, 
we need in this kind penetrating head trauma it we are considering it simple sometime but it is not simple and uh, the key preventive measure for penetrating head trauma include such as use of protective headgear firearm safety following workplace safety regulation fall prevention vehicle safety vehicle safety violence prevention improving infrastructure fall risk assessment regular health checkup in patient with high fall or the accident risk so these all are helping to manage such kind of patient and reduce the number of penetrating head injury you know the immediate assessment and stabilization of the vital signs are crucial a b c d e should be quickly evaluated and managed as the condition can be life threatening patient with penetrating head injury benefit from the immediate transfer to a trauma center equipped with the specialized resource neurosurgical expertise and comprehensive trauma care capabilities rapid neuroimaging particularly ct scanning is essential for evaluating the extent and location of injuries identifying foreign bodies assessing bleeding and guiding immediate management cervical immobilization must be performed if the cervical spine injury cannot be ruled out prophylactic antibiotic reduce the risk of infection especially in the soil or organic material contamination case neurosurgical consultation and intervention are often necessary in case where there are indication for the removing foreign bodies repairing blood vessels controlling bleeding and relieving intracranial pressure patient with severe penetrating head trauma may require icu admission for close monitoring of vital parameters like neurological status and icp continuous neurological assessment are important in detecting change in the patient's condition monitoring for the sign of increased icp and evaluating neurological deficit major to prevent secondary brain injury such as maintaining adequate oxygenation controlling intracranial pressure avoiding hypotension to critical minimize further damage rehabilitation is often necessary for individual with penetrating head trauma to optimize recovery and regain functional abilities long term follow up and monitoring are essential to managing potential complication addressing cognitive or physical impairment and supporting the patient's recovery over time rapid assessment and multidisciplinary management help optimize patient outcome so in this team where you have a huge team such as ems personnel emergency medicine physicians and trauma surgeons neurosurgeon neurologist intensivist or neurointensivist neuroradiologist physical and occupational therapist speech language pathologist psychologist and psychiatrist social worker and the case management so all are your team to treat such kind of patient i try to explain in detail which is such a important topic uh but i hope you will like it subscribe it and uh, share it thank you so much we will meet in another uh, uh, lecture thank you so much see you soon